Thank you for staying with us. And let me just come back to you, Shani, to, to continue this conversation. Now, let, let's look at moving forward now. Let's look at, um, you know, how we can stop this from happening again. Okay. Uh, right now, we have the Dapchi case on ground. And then how do we prevent this from happening again? We have uh, policies already in place. We have the Safe School Initiative, that, like Mukhtar said, that has been implemented on paper. But when you go to the local communities, this has not been implemented. What do we do going forward? Can we just ensure that we keep our schools safe? Okay. We have, uh, we know places that uh, Boko Haram still operates. We need to start telling ourselves the truth. We, we can't continue saying uh, Boko Haram has been defeated when they have not been defeated. We need to start saying the truth, let people be aware of what it is, let us know how to protect ourselves. The government should put out specifics on this is the step we are going to take for schools that, have, uh, that are prone to attack. Provide securities. For girls' school, like the, the girls' school in Dapche, let them have permanent and consistent security. Let them have protection. Let our girls, our boys be in school and know that somebody is watching after them. Somebody is looking out for them. We can't continue to have uh, situations where uh, people can just walk into schools and take our students away. The, the case of Dapche especially, these girls had to run into the bush. Until now, we can't, account to, we, we can't account for many of them. We can't continue doing that. Let, let's have specific. These are the steps that we should take. Let's, let's take these steps and let's ensure that our schools are protected. All right, so talking about protection, Abid, let me come back to you. Um, you know, we're, look, we're looking at ways to, you know, end this um, issue. Uh, just some months back, the federal government wrote to the National Assembly asking for $1 billion, you know, to totally end the insurgency. Uh, do you think that is happening anytime soon, or how do you think we can use those monies to end the insurgency? Um, my problem with Nigeria is that we are fighting terrorism as an emergency situation. Terrorism is not fought as an emergency situation. It is something that has to be fought with carefully considered approach. Now, for any money, that they are bringing for fight against terrorism to work. We must have a very big uh, picture of what we are going to do with the money. We have spent money before. Some people collected $2.1 billion and nothing happened. Now they are bringing $1 billion. Who are you giving it to? There is corruption in the military. There are all issues around the military um, head. If you give them the money, even if they buy the best equipment in the world, are the uh, security personnel trained enough to handle them? Now, you know, what, what but, but, but I believe I believe that will also be part of it. I, I believe that will also be part of it when they buy the weapons or they buy the 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 um, the arms. They will be there should be a, a you know so to speak now like a program to train them on how to use these equipment. Yeah, one thing is knowing what to do, and another thing is doing it. They all know these things. You go to their offices and they bring all the papers to you. You know that they know them, but. Like all the contributors have said, is there a political will to do that? Can they actually take it to the next level? Now, coming back to the, the, the kids that we are just kidnapped, people always focus on these kids that we are kidnapped from the school. What of the thousands of students that are being kidnapped when they, we are, they, when they are at home? These guys are students also. We hear that the, the army has liberated like 10,000 captives from Boko Haram. And from that 10,000, you can get another 2,000 students or prospective students. Now, Nigeria is for all of us, not just for 50 students. There are some students that were kidnapped at home, and there are people that have been kidnapped before now, and nobody is saying anything. Now, for me, if Nigeria wants to move forward, let us stop all this short-termism. Yeah. We need to get 
a feasible plan for this counter terrorism. All right, I have, I have to, I just have to hold you there. Uh, Mukhtar, what do you think about the, the, the money that was asked by the federal government to end insurgency quickly? We, we need to wrap up. The truth of the matter is, I don't think money is Nigeria's issue. Again, it's implementation of a clear-cut policy. We do not have any sort of clear-cut policy. Our internal security architecture is beyond peace for. It's, we, we are taking a fire brigade approach to a situation that needs to have a predetermined course of action. As long as we keep on taking a fire brigade approach, we are going to keep on seeing issues which we should not see. For example, the abduction of girls in, in, in Yobe should not have happened. We should have had a security architecture in that area, which would have had an early warning system, which in turn would have prevented the insurgents from coming to within, you know, maybe a kilometer or two kilometers from the compound. We don't even have that. All right, Mukhtar. Instead, like, you know, so Hope money isn't the issue. Hopefully we'll have that in the very in the nearest future, but then we have to wrap the conversation. I, on this note, um, thank you for joining us, Mukhtar and Yen from New York City. Um, and I'm the Anikwe, dropped on the Hangout just before we went for that break. But thanks as well for joining us on the program, as well as Bede Chukwekezie, who joined us from Hartfield in the United Kingdom. Thanks as well for joining us on the program. Let me just come back to you now quickly in a few sentences. Do you think the money will do the trick? Right now, with the way things are set up in this country right now, I do not believe that the money will do the trick. Like Mukhtar has said, money is not the problem. We've had money released in the past for the same purpose. What happened to them? We have money released in the last two years, last three years, for fighting terrorism. What has happened to it? Until we have a concrete plan that someone who is leading is ready to see to the later, we might not move forward. Thank you very much, Alajani Alaydi, Republic of Medanas, for joining us on the program. Thank you, Victor. Of course. Well, that's where we are. We'll take a break and we'll be back with the movie videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. Don't go away. One, there was no meeting of Northern Senators today, known to me. No meeting of Northern Senators since we came back from Ghana, known to me. The suspension of Senator Abdullahi Adamu as the chairman of the Northern Senate Caucus over alleged mismanagement of funds begins the top five video chart this week in fifth place. Next in fourth is the demolition of the secretariat of a faction of the APC not loyal to Governor Nasser El Rufai in Kaduna State. Those things don't. He reads them, he wants to know what people are saying, but they don't deter him, they don't discourage him. The reply by the national chairman of the ruling APC to the opposition PDP that President Muhammadu Buhari is not deterred by the criticism takes third spot. Oh, there are issues everywhere. We hope he can bring peace, particularly a case like the National Assembly, uh, where else? maybe Kogi, and a few of the other hotspots. This is, uh, I call it little crystal, <laughs> and it's, it's little indeed. While second is occupied by the video of a gifted Nigerian who invented an aircraft. All right. Pride of the green, cleared for takeoff. Let's go. Let me show you something about maneuverability. The man who has taken over from uh, Jonathan has not met the expectation of Nigerians. That is what democracy is all about. And former President Olusha Gombasanjo explaining why he thinks President Mohamed Buhari shouldn't seek re-election is the most viewed video in the past week. But if you say that, not right. Well, there you go. Those were the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. However, while the government is planning to improve security system in schools to curb future terror attacks, many will hope that the policy to end violent extremism will be followed to the latter. More importantly, a coordinated approach is also launched to rescue not only Dutchie girls, but the Chiba girls and others who are also in captivity in the country at large. 
And that's where we'll wrap it up on the program this week. Thank you for watching. But of course, do remember the conversation doesn't end here. It continues via the social media addresses showing on your screen. Thank you once again for watching. I'm Victor Mathias. Bye for now.